iOS 26 is officially here, and it's the biggest update we've seen in over a decade. Hey everyone, it's Andrew, and welcome back to the channel. So in this video, I want to go over some of the main new customization features that you can do in iOS 26, as well as talk about some of my favorite features that I've seen so far. I've downloaded it already on my iPhone 16 Pro Max. This is my iPhone 16, so I'll be downloading it on this as well. So let's get started. Now that I have iOS 26 downloaded, the first thing I wanna actually show you is the new iOS wallpaper that was in the keynote and how to get to it. So if I long press the lock screen and go to the plus icon, I'm greeted by all of the different wallpapers that I can look at. And so all I'm gonna do is scroll down to iOS and tap on that. And when I do that, I have that new wallpaper. And one of the really cool things that you can do right away is you can adjust the size of the clock. And I know that's kind of crazy. It's been on Android for a while, but I think it's really cool. So if I drag this down, I can make the clock bigger. It looks like a bug right there, but like you can't really change the size on those, which is a kind of interesting. So maybe that'll be changed. But right there, I can make it huge. I can make it smaller and I'll just go out of this. And it looks like the way that I can add widgets adjust as well. So that's down here now, and I can still adjust my lock screen controls. And then I'm going to tap add. There's also this new button right here on the lock screen. If I tap on it after selecting a photo, it'll generate a spatial scene and it'll give a 3D effect to my lock screen, which is pretty cool for good photos of individuals. Look at that, like that is Pretty sick. Another cool thing about the lock screen is if you have photo shuffle turned on and you have something like on tap, it'll actually adjust the clock as you go through it. So if I tap here, it'll adjust it. And it's kind of like a dynamic clock as you use it, which is I think pretty cool. It's a cool feature. And when you take a screenshot, the UI is different here. So it has a new thumbnail view. I'll just go ahead and hit not now there, but there's just a lot going on much more than previously. So if I like want to save it, I'll hit that check mark and I'll have saved the photos, save the files, make a quick note, and I'll just do save the photos. Okay. Now, one of the big things or the big theme differences this year is the new liquid glass theme or UI or whatever you want to call it. That's now in iOS 26. If I slide up, even the animation feels more fluid. It's a little bit different. And on the home screen, I have new icons. And while the icons aren't circular, like a lot of people were reporting, it does look somewhat different. And there's just little glass like elements that have been added to the icons and really throughout all of iOS, you'll be able to see that new controls exist. There's more screen real estate that you'll be able to see. For example, like if I go into, let's go into Safari, the controls for Safari are down at the bottom. If I tap on this, it's a lot like Vision OS that will pull up the controls that I need to use and I can just scroll down and you'll notice when I scroll, it makes it smaller. So I have really an entire screen to use for looking at content. Now, another big thing when it comes to customizing is changing the colors, which we got last year. You can do dark mode tinted, but there is a new clear option that you can add for your icons. And so if we long press, there is the edit button right here that we can select. And this section right here has been changed. The UI here looks different. You have add widget, customize. Now you have edit wallpaper here and edit pages. But we are going to tap on customize. And when I do that, I noticed already right away like dark doesn't actually show up as dark. It looks like that's a little bit of a bug, but the controls are slightly different. So you used to have large and small. You can see a large one and a small one right here. If you hit on the sun icon, you can change it to light or dark. And right here you have dark mode, which it looks like it's not adjusting, it's just a bug. And then you have tinted, which apparently there are new colors and ways that you can adjust it, which is cool. And that actually looks pretty good. Not gonna lie, it looks pretty good for a tinted icon. I know that they've probably done a lot of work with that, but if I go back there, you also have the clear option. So if I go to customize again and tap on clear, 
it changes my icons to a clear look and it just gives a very glassy, almost see-through look. I'm not sure if I'm going to keep it like this. For now, I will. I think it looks pretty stunning, but it is gonna take some time to get used to. But let me know, what do you guys think so far of these icons? Now, one thing I'm actually kinda not happy about, or I guess doesn't really look that nice, is if you swipe down on the right and go to Control Center, I'm not sure I'm convinced of the glassy look here. I think the gradient in the background needs to be a little bit stronger, but I think they need to make it a little bit darker, but we'll see. Another really cool thing that I actually am in love with is if I go into Apple Music, a really cool new feature if I select an album and wanna to go to the lock screen. So if I select this one here and I'll put the volume down, and I start playing this song. I have no idea if this song's good or not, so I'm not endorsing the song. But if I go to the lock screen, go down, go to the lock screen, and I get back here, and it has the album art fully there. I just think that looks absolutely stunning. And if you even go back into Apple Music, you can just see like the play, the shuffle button is now there. You have, you know, going home, new, uh, radio, your library. So you can also pin music. So if I kind of hold on this and see right here, there's an option of pin album. And this is something that I've really been wanting. Sometimes in Apple Music, it's a little bit hard to find the music that you like. But if I hit pin, it's gonna say pinned. And now that album will be here at the top. To me, that's a really cool addition to Apple Music. Now, another really cool thing is there's a little bit more customization in iMessage. And so if I go into a contact like my friend Christian, he has a tech YouTube channel. I'll go ahead and link him below. Go ahead and check him out. But if I go into his contact, this whole UI looks totally different. So you have info, backgrounds, photos, links, documents, and all of the other stuff there. But if I go to backgrounds, I can add different backgrounds and suggestions that it gives. And so far I've really liked, like for example, this one, Aurora. So if I click on this, it'll change and personalize. I'll go ahead and check this here. There's a lot of bugs, but you can see there and go back to the chat. It changes iMessage with a very beautiful looking background. And I think that looks pretty cool if I must say so myself. I really like that feature, I like that addition. And just going into photos, and you can kind of see with the glass, it is a little bit hard to read in some areas, but if you go into photos, you have library, and you also have collections, which is really nice. I know that was a toggle that a lot of people liked previously, and Apple took it away, so you have library, collections, and then search. And I think all of this could end up being very good in the long term. So I think that looks really nice for photos. I'm not convinced with this UI. Uh, it just does look a little bit hard to read. And another big thing that changed is the camera. So the camera is a lot more simple to use. So you just have photo and video. And let's just say I tap on photo. It presents my options to select from. So I can choose flash and live and exposure. And if I tap out, I can go to video and choose the different video options. It gives me shooting in 4K, 60 FPS at the top. And if I tap on this, I can adjust the exposure here, turn on the action feature and flash and stuff like that. Even though it does seem radically different, it does simplify iOS in my opinion. Something that I really thought was cool too is the new UI for Apple TV. And so you have kind of a full screen preview of the different things that it's kind of marketing to you and shows you when you go into Apple TV. I think that looks really nice. And if I play something, so I can just go down and let's say, I just wanna play the conference. The controls are very different as well. And so you can see here, like everything has that glass aesthetic. Like look how beautiful that is. It just looks great. Just overall, I think it makes all of the UI more uniformed. Now, something I am a little bit concerned about, again, like I said, is Control Center. And I don't know if you paid attention, but this is a massive size update. So this is a huge beta. I expect a lot of bugs. You can already see a lot of bugs throughout this, but go ahead and subscribe to the channel. I'll probably be doing about a week from now, an update of just kind of life on iOS 26 beta. Comment below what's your favorite feature so far. And as always, guys, thanks for watching. God bless, and I will see you on the next video.